Okay, just having a practice session. Feel like I've not played chess for a while, although I've been playing the correspondence games. I've had the odd bullet game, but really focusing on long play, I've been doing a lot of over the board games. So playing the online stuff seems to have taken a back seat at the minute. Okay, so they brought the queen out. This looks like this is going to be one of those strange games. So a smaller piece attacking a higher piece, it's probably going to, oh, I thought they were just going to resign straight away. And do we just make space? Uh, da, da, da. Let's just go for simple x-ray through to the queen. Yeah, so I've been playing a few over the board games um, in preparation for hopefully some potential competitions, tournaments, and get try and get back into them. But I've got to feel good in myself. It's attacking the knight. I mean, we can bring the knight out then, I suppose. And then we can bring it back in again once he opens this pawn attacking the knight. So not doing that. So let me see. Can we just... Uh, you know what? I'll keep this bishop on the x-ray. And let's grab the bishop here. That looks pretty straightforward. They've gone for a quirky type of opening, so I'm just being steady. Even though they've just developed their queen, it still can quite work for them. I'm really expecting this to drop, but he's not done that, so the knight is looking maybe to come here at some point. I'm going to bring the bishop out, maybe try and manage that square for a second. Now the bishop drops, so we don't really want them to have a 2-1-1 on, -one on this situation, because if the bishop takes pawn takes then the queen takes so I'm going to bring the knight here so that was the plan all along once they drop that pawn now he's probably got sights of attacking this pawn with the queen without developing any of his other pieces which would be okay for me So yes, the over the board games have been so, oh, <laughs> exactly, it's got to come for it. And um, we could castle queenside, but then there's potential danger of the bishop coming here. So we could simply push the pawn up or push it here. I think his safest bet's probably just coming here like this. Nice and steady way, it's nothing fantastic, nothing brilliant. Yeah, the over the board games have been such a massive revelation. Um, I'm having to start again from scratch, you know, basically getting used to the feel of the pieces, um, thinking for myself in terms of I have to watch what the opponent actually plays because on online the computer does it all for you, you know, it does your, your PGN, it does your um, um, it makes sure that nobody can make an illegal move, that sort of stuff. But when you're playing over the board, you have to do notate. Well, for the longer games, you have to do notation. You have to then also concentrate on what your opponent's doing. You have to also make sure you're doing the right move as well, so you're not making an illegal move, so which could make you lose the game. So there's a lot of pressure. It's a massive difference when you're playing over the board real chess. So he's moved the queen again. He's not developed his bishop or the knight. So I'm going to castle. It doesn't mean that they're going to lose the game just because they haven't developed their pieces. It's just that it usually is kind of better if you do. Because you've got more pieces that you can actually use to target the weak squares, the weak pieces. Put pressure towards the king area. But it's not saying that it's set in stone that you have to do it that way. If you've got one or two pieces that you believe confidently that they're going to do the damage, then go for it. But always bear in mind, um, if it falls foul, you haven't got your other pieces developed, so it does take a bit of time to get them back in the game, so you've lost key tempo. But like I say, it's, um, you, it's entirely up to yourselves, isn't it, what you decide to do with your game. So the queen's in the middle of the board, the knight's not developed, but what can we do about it? I'm interested in pushing here. He looks like he's trying to come and attack here. I mean, I could go for a cheapy and go for an ex try and go for an exchange. And the computer would go, definitely don't be doing any of that stuff. But I'm actually going to go for a cheapy, nice and simple. 
perhaps attacking this pawn as well not that it's a great attack because if I did take this pawn all the rook has to do is this and then he's facing our king so that might not be the way to go just to bear that in mind all that glitters ain't gold you know Do, 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 do. Capturing, if he did do that, his knight would be taken, but he still does have this here. And at the minute, he's not got the queen target in there, so it would probably would get away with it. So they're in a deep think. They're slowly but surely. Yay, hey, he's exchanged. Okay, so I'm going to open up the rook to start targeting the weak pawn here. Bishop's got a nice diagonal towards this pawn. If this pawn can get itself elevated, maybe the bishop can start targeting the, the knight. So the knight's move before we can actually get any targeting done there. So what's his real plan? Because at the end of the day, he's attacking this pawn, he's attacking this pawn, and he can't go back here. It can go there because the rook's not really going to take. So I'm going to actually smaller piece attack the higher piece for now. So it has moved. Okay, right. So he still hasn't got this out here, but we, we haven't got a definite attack on anything. He's looking maybe to protect this pawn, isn't he? Because we were going to push here. So we're going to have to change our attack a little bit, maybe push this rook here. Then we've got a, like a two on one situation going. So I'm going to bring the rook here, also facing the king. So behind all of this activity, if it kicks off, then we will be able to put some pressure on the king area as well. So he's moved the king out of the way. So if we did push the pawn like we are going to do now, we're trying to make some sort of inroads in. If we capture, then is that better for him? We capture, maybe he takes with the pawn or maybe he takes with the knight. If we push onto the knight, then the knight has to move and we're sort of managing the center doesn't look good because it's all locked down really but it, it we've got a highly elevated pawn and we've opened up our bishop towards the king area so i'm actually going to push the pawn onto the knight attacking the higher piece because it looked like it was going to turn out to be more favorable for them um, if we did capture the pawn Okay, so they've jumped in, so we can take and we actually win a pawn, looks like to me. So if we capture, then we capture with the rook. Obviously I'm a bit squinchy because the rook is in the centre of the board. Rooks don't have any place in the centre of the board. Although, yeah, one of my favourite players, um, one of my favourite players um, actually likes their rook being in the centre. You know, and I'm like going, no, don't change, please change. And I really do like them. You know, they're they're really good and they're a good player, um, consistent with their knowledge, and it's really pleasing to watch them play. Um, but yeah, they they like having the rooks in the centre. Everybody's different. Do you know what I mean? You you make your own. Oh, this bishop doesn't have any protection on it, and they propose the take back. See. Um, normally, um, I wouldn't go for take backs because you could go for take backs through every move so that the opponent eventually finds a position that actually gets you beat. And um, what is the actual point in that? But I'm going to accept the take back this time and just so that we can develop and move forward. But yeah, it is quite annoying if you're constantly doing take backs, take backs, take backs because you lose the kind of genuineness of the game so now I'm just basically treating this like it's a uh, basically it's a training game um, 
I was just looking at it as playing as a proper game so now he's probably going to get more advantage now from whatever it is he's found so we can do on pass on the bishop takes and then we're on this pawn here but then his rook is there so maybe we can double up the rooks onto that pawn so we'll do on pass on we're on the bishop maybe the, we can take with the bishop because the rook's not going to take that's one key thing though that I've got to always remember um, is that I've probably mentioned it years ago where which tend to treasure the rooks and more times out of 10 actually capturing a minor piece with a rook gives us a better position not saying all the time but you know sometimes it does and it's been able to spot that so I'm going to bring the rook like we said to the pawn here then the king is obviously going to come to defend swing this bishop up a little bit tucking this pawn maybe they drop or maybe they just push the pawn down that might be a nice position for them now although his rook can actually come and defend so if we bring the bishop here maybe he does he push and he's got like three pieces on there I don't know I think that looks okay so I think the rook is going to come and defend this pawn so the, it's with the take back situation I think I'm being very nice today um, yeah so the rooks come to defend which is okay for us now what what I do kind of envisage and it might not work but if I push the pawn here onto the knight if they forget themselves and they actually take then we basically win the rook but he doesn't have to take does he he can just leave it there like that and then what else can he do I suppose he then can come and attack the bishop or can bring his knight around obviously the bishop can take the pawn so that let's look at that continuation so pushing here then the bishop takes the pawn he's actually on our rook at that point So if we brought our rook up to attack the bishop then the bishop probably spends a bit of time moving a bit and then we'll be able to take the knight off the board so i think that continuation works either way depending on what the opponent does i do believe they will take here but i'm hoping we have this moment of tempo where they've got a piece under attack and one of these sort of mantra things in our um, mission statement is sometimes when you've got a piece under attack you don't then go and attack another piece unless of course it's to your benefit a bit like the Paul Morphy type thing the Wilhelm Steinitz type sort of play you know okay so you're attacking my piece but well, I'm just going to attack your piece you know so you have to be mindful of that in that situation but more times out of 10 in my basic sort of games it works out that oh and he has taken like we said okay so i'm going to bring the rook here and attack the bishop like we said we still do have this moment of attacking so we're still attacking the bishop so we kind of still won the tempo in terms of getting a minor piece off the board unless of course there's something else that i've missed so that this is the case what we're talking about is sometimes it's not very sit well we've still got both pieces under attack so he's basically probably looking to come down and put a check on us on here with his rook if we take the knight if we take the bishop first then his rook takes the pawn and he's owning the file so he's going to be owning the file anyway this pawn is going to go but does it improve our position this pawn can go with the take here our king can go to safety and suppose then his rook comes up and attacks the knight and then he's on the pawns in the back here but we should have some compensation for this situation I'm going to take mm, Hmm, something's growing on me. Take, 
he comes down puts a check on we move into the uh, the bishop probably might be a little bit stronger in this situation I'm actually taking the bishop I don't think there was much in any of them I did like having my rooks on this file being able to take here but I don't want to lose out in position and then gain further advantages so I feel like taking the bishop was better it's my thoughts anyway I, I, I think that that was okay we're still on his minor piece so obviously he's got the option now to move it now does he have any major threats if he comes here we'll take so he can attack it by going backwards but if he attacks it then we take the pawn here because the pawn is attacking two pieces in fact we don't even have to do that we can take with the rook putting pressure on the rook but in fact if he goes here then the knight's going to be in front so probably not taking with the rook just take the take with the pawn because his rook will be able to take so he's actually going for the exchanges all right okay so we're up a minor piece at the moment so we can look to trade down as far as i can see we don't need to be too greedy so i'm going to reduce his, the amount of pieces he's got on the board I'm going to attack him again because the knight is protecting and the bishop's protecting this square. So some may go, well no, you should have kept the rooks on the ball because you know he's got like a passed pawn and he, he might be able to cajole it down. Maybe we can use the bishop as a blocker, you know, blocking this pawn and then utilize the knight to start attacking these pawns up here. So he's not wanting to exchange. The bishop's protected by the pawn here, so we can look to start making some moves. As you can see, my knee-jerk reaction was to go shooting here, but his knight is protecting this square. Okay, so we do have this pawn here, and we might as well take this pawn off the board with the bishop. We can always swim back and attack the rook. I'll just about to say you can expect this pawn to drop down. Um, do, do, do. So we can attack his rook, like we said. He takes our rook, we take his rook. Then he pushes down, but his pass pawn is a bit too elevated. Or we can just simply go behind the pawn. Or, no, we can't go there. Okay. So let's shall we just bring the rook here? Because in evaluation it'll always be a simple move when you go, oh why didn't I just do that? So just bring the rook here. Now we've got a two on one on the pawn. His rook can't really come and defend because the squares are protected. So I can probably envisage that he's going to attack our bishop just to give him something to do so that then he can come across here and protect the pawn. Okay, so that advantage may have this no mind you can still go here can't it yeah so if I go here he drops his pawn and then my bishop is trapped anyway so I wouldn't go there so he's gonna come back to protect the pawn can our bishop get to it no because the knight will take so I have to come back to where I came from or do I because the question begs I could actually just take the pawn here if his rook takes then I take his knight but then he's equalized the situation hasn't he so I would not really want that so I'm actually going to bring the bishop back here can envisage this sort of stuff so I need to get ready to move again but obviously the rook is coming here to protect the pawn here interesting I'm quite enjoying this although really they'd lost the bishop earlier so we're going to take it back because in competitions you don't do take it back so there's no point in actually practicing the art of taking back pieces because it that doesn't help your development you should try and make the better move do your calculations then make your move I'm not saying I, I'm not nowhere near perfect and I, I will wish that I could have taken back a move 
but that's to me not that's like having training wheels on you know on a bike you know what I mean okay so we we're in what do we want to do maybe get rid of this knight he's gonna start pushing his pawns let's push the pawn obviously he's gonna be blocking with either this or something start swinging this up a bit a bit more pressure to eventually you can always just block it oh that's gonna hurt it's proposed another take back but why would you make a move like that do you know what I mean yeah 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 it's like I said when they're taking doing take backs it just spoils the game I've, I've accepted it because you know um, I knew this was going to happen take back take back take back let me find a better position so I can win you know on the other side of the coin you can look at it like well okay you're helping the person out you're helping them develop you're helping them. I've not come on here to help them develop I've come on here to have my practice <laughs> do you know what I mean so yes so he's blocked it down now okay so that's what we were talking about he could just do that to block the pawn from attacking the knight does make space um, for the bishop again attacking the rook so I'm going to throw it out there but it's going to feel like I'm going for a draw but I'm not just go here attack the rook So when he comes here this time, then I can bring my bishop here, and then I can sit my bishop here, and then attack the, the pawn. That's the kind of idea which potentially will work, and I think really they should have just dropped it here, so then my bishop can't come here. So a bit of an educational session then. Okay, so we bring the bishop here like this. So yet yeah, the error, well, not saying it's an error it's just like it probably would have been better than bringing the rook here because then it's I can't bring my bishop here I would try and fashion here but this pawn is there so but it also yeah that would have been the better move I'm waiting for them to ask for a take back <laughs> uh, where am I at so he's moved the pawn so he's moved the pawn now I mean we can take the pawn here so there's no issues now take with the knight so we're attacking his knight got to be careful because there might be some cleverness in what they've just done we take with the knight then his knight takes the pawn maybe just to be different then bishop takes yeah okay let's just take the pawn It's nice slow steady development in the game and it's definitely more positional play which is our kind of style we like doing that sort of thing positional thing because we're not squishing the king or anything we're just looking to try and improve our position at each stage so well there was something else he could do right okay so he's attacking our rook so we can bring the rook back one or two just make sure there's no magic forks on the king. He'd get taken if he goes here. Bishop's protecting our. So we could come and attack his knight. Then he can swing here. He's got a nice outpost. Nothing can touch him then. Okay, let's um, see if we can get around the back. Maybe sides of attacking the pawn here just grabbing pieces so definitely coming here for another attack yep okay so we're just gonna bring the rook up make sure there's no troubles per se all the while still looking at what we can do to the king but don't really see much at the minute I'll be overextending and he may get that knight and rook check position which I will not be happy with so we need to just focus not on the king just let the king sit there and maybe our position in the longer term may help us out 
we might need to try and get one of these pawns queens so that's the attempt that word so the knight's getting a bit active he's moved and said take back straight away oh dear me I'm getting kind of fed up with this take back stuff now change my mindset it's a training session it's a training session and they're obviously wanting us to help them so that's fine boom 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 boom, boom. I won't say there's not much that they can do I mean there's he can be very arty I mean he can just leave his knight there he don't have to move it could look to give his king a bit of space if he wants to look like he's active then come down and attack this pawn here what do we do can't push the pawn because he'll take so we'll just take knight takes so it's reducing down pieces the less pieces that I've got to promote is going to be better for him I think you're probably going to see something like this Or maybe we're not going to see anything at all. Oh, the king's attacking the rook, which is protected. So, is there some sort of idea that he's looking to sacrifice his rook? Bishop takes, then the king takes. Yep, so then it's the bishop against the knight. A little bit of cleverness there. Now, you'd think, you know, a little bit of cleverness like that. Why haven't they shown that kind of clever? That's kind of deep, is that? I think anyway so we're going to take the pawn here with the rook yeah that was really shifty um, if you didn't know what I meant um, so if I did something I don't know move my king to be here then he could go take then if I went like that then his king would take pretty straightforward so the knight's getting active as it got into a decent square we've still got protection here and here and here we could look to simply attack or we could just take the pawn off the board with our knight do I really want him putting a check on my king Mm, 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 mm. could put a check on his king first don't want to overthink the situation what, is he what do you mean propose a take back on my move <laughs> you can't propose a take back I've just moved so I'm going to say no this time because this game will never end they're obviously wanting to get that winning position which that king move there was quite sly okay we can move now put a check on his rook but obviously his rook just comes down and um ba, 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 ba. I'm gonna attack the pawn so he got a fork yet yeah. he's looking for a magical fork with his knight feeling happy that we don't want his rook coming through onto our king winning any tempo not that it could cause any major damage it's just you never know you never know and as I'm preparing for OTB tournaments I need to start really changing my mindset on the games I'm playing I'm not saying I'm winning all of them it's a matter of using the losing to win mentality just taking time learning from players watching the games what could be done better during the game not afterwards doing the evaluation and whether i take that opportunity or not is entirely up to me um, but it's nice to learn from um, watching players play so 
So of course we've refused the um, tape back, it looks like they're taking a while. Oh dear. Oh, the knight's moved. I didn't even see that. So the knight's now attacking the bishop. No major concerns there, really. Um, it's not got anything on our king, so I'm going to just take the pawn with the rook. Watch just now, the um, this square is covered by the bishop. So he's trying to get down to the back end. Yeah, the back end that we don't want him getting to. So I feel like bringing the knight here. Then obviously we can expect this pawn to come running down. Can just move the king here. But is there some magical type of back rank checkmate? Weird thing with his knight sitting here. Then his king comes across. Yeah, they've got some serious skills. They've got some serious skills. That's where he's looking to sit. But if the knight moves, then the bishop can take the knight from there. I'm going to bring the knight around. So he's looking for the squish here with my king being here. And his knight coming here, then he just comes across and gets a checker meter. Very, very clever. Whether or not they were going for that, that position does board well for them if we allow that to happen. So he's moved the knight, and let's see what is happening here. If I'm playing it over the boards, I bring the bishop here, protecting the king, and then make space for the pawns. <laughs> That's a bit being too too protective could bring the rook here and look to see if we get his rook off the board start pushing this pawn up so has he gone there to go here somehow no, 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 no. so how do we get these pawns up he's blocked off the access for this pawn jumping up going to bring the rook up here I don't think I need to overthink too much really just looking for the clever forks that he's looking for with his rook and with his knight oh, oh. excuse me with this now you have to be careful uh, the thing is is everything's blocked off isn't it the knight can go there go there go there can go there can't go there he's gonna get taken so we could push 
just pushing again don't need to overthink I don't think So it's tacking the pawn, so again, I don't think I need to overthink, but I could look to try and get this off the board at last. It doesn't have to, it's probably going to look to own the file, so he can come here now to try and put a check on the king. And he's not doing that, it's tacking this pawn. Maybe he's thinking, oh, I'm going to jump there and put a tack on him, but then his knight takes me. Uh, let's push Okay, looking to own the file, like we said, excuse me. Uh, coming back to put a check on the king. Can always block and bring the knight back again to this position. So I'm going to bring the knight back again. It's obviously going to go searching for it. Trying to get round the back. Yep. So he's trying to get round the back and he's going to try and go back to that original type position of although his knight's going to have to readjust itself now isn't it because he wants to get here with his knight if he's going to cause any trouble okay let's just bring the rook here obviously he's coming back here to block this pawn off gone closer into the king okay so at this stage here now um, because he's allowed this situation we can now because we've got these advanced pawns here I believe we might get them off we can bring this rook here and put a check on his king his king takes we could take his rook off the board his king takes and we can start pushing I believe or does the knight block that? Actually, yeah, the knight can go here and block here. So maybe we don't do something as crazy as that. Okay, let's uh, settle down, settle down and push. Keep it simple. Mindful, we have the x-ray through, but he's going to move it again, potentially to... But then at least the bishop on the rug are protecting and we're slowly advancing the pawn up the board whoa the knight's moved it's no major check because the pawn can take and let's push Oh, he's got that thing that we were talking about, but not the complete thing. Because his knight had to be here in order for that to work. So, from all the calculations that we did, we worked out that that was the only area where they'd be able to get like a proper checkmate on us. And we worked out that the knight couldn't get to this position so really um this move although it was a shock we knew it it couldn't be finished there's no end to that um, type of play 
so that's why it's quite nice doing calculations during your game so that you're not really so he's had to go back because like I said the knight needed to be here okay so now all I need to do is bring the rook here and go here even if he goes there with his rook we just go here because we'll have a check on his king so then we'll get a queen so they're probably going to resign at this point it's got a check on okay so that's like a last stitch attack type thing so I'm just going to go here there's nothing else really that can be done from the opponent so he's taking pieces off the board and let's just go and get the rook off the board with the queen so that's the type of thing calculation negates you know you know what the player can actually do with their pieces and he's proposing take backs no he'll probably be taking back to the beginning of the game so I'm gonna re decline so then they'll resign now at this point maybe not Oh, they're just going to let the time run down. Hmm. Do, 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 do. Okay, well, I'll pause it. And they actually captured just as we paused. Okay, so we'll go for the queen with the check. Take the knight off the board. And then they have no more pieces to play with, so definitely should be resigning at this point okay they're not so let's go and get another queen let's just keep going do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. just put a check on another check and checkmate okay so a bit of an educational session there actually um, so I'll put that in the tutorial bit although it wasn't meant to be a tutorial I was just doing a training session for myself